I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with William Jackson Harper, the star of the new season of Love Life on HBO Max. Um, so this is obviously an anthology series that is focusing on a, a new character each season. And so Anna Kendrick was the focus of the first season. I'm just curious if you had any conversations with her before you got started, if she gave you any advice, what, what was that like? Yeah, she did. She was like, uh, get your rest when you can. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a really interesting thing to, to work on a show where, you know, there's very little like other plots and other threads that are being followed. It's usually just, you know, like you're sort of keyed in on one character, which means that you just sort of, you know, you're, you're in it from, from beginning to end. And it's, uh, you know, it's like you want to, you want to, like the scripts are so good, you really want to like bring your best to it. So it's like, it does mean that, you know, like sort of, you know, you don't push yourself too much when you don't have to. So you're just able to like sort of be available and, 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 and have the energy you need to actually just sort of get through the day. Hmm. Well, this is also, we should mention, it's like a romantic comedy series. Uh, I'm just curious what your relationship was to rom-coms just as a genre and whether maybe that's changed now that you've done one, you've led one. Um, it, it, it was pretty much non-existent before. Um, I think it will remain mostly non-existent. Uh, you know, but I, I, not because I really just not, I mean, I loved working on Love Life. I thought it was just like a really interesting thing. I think when I watched Anna's season, I just thought that it was such a nuanced way of, really it's like, you know, it takes the genre idea of, of a rom-com and just uses it as a, as a, uses it as a way to have a character study of a person in a, in, a, in a decade of their lives. And I think that that's, you know, a large part of who a person is, is, you know, who they decide to be with, if they decide to be with anyone, you know, all of that is like, it, it, I feel like that's one of those questions that we do sort of wrestle with. And, um, and so I think that the thing that I loved about Love Life so much was that it was really just like a character study of this of this 20 something woman that just needed to sort of figure out her life. And the thing that I loved about our season was that it's a 30 something year old man and who's who thinks he's got it figured out. And it's also really messy. And, you know, he doesn't have it figured out and he feels like he should be at the finish line and he's just sort of midway through. Um, and so like I, I really love that, um, especially with this this show um you know i think that you know but i, I mean i'm open to rom-coms you know possibly like sort of exploring wider themes i think that's but i think that's what sort of sets love life apart um is that it's it's really a character study just sort of yeah. set in this genre well yeah let's dive more into studying this character of marcus who is this book editor he's just trying to figure out what he wants in life mostly pretty unlucky when it comes to love and sort of perceived a little bit as a square. Um, I'm just curious, what are the parts of Marcus that you found recognizable maybe in yourself or your friends or just what, what did you feel like you immediately knew I can play this character? Uh, you know, I mean, we were sort of, sort of creating them like as we were, as, as the season was going on. Um, I think that, there's things about like, first off, I think Marcus is a bit of a workaholic in a, you know, like, you know, he's at a, we, we meet him, he's at a wedding, you know, re replying to emails on his phone. And um, that's something I can definitely relate to. Uh, I think that especially sort of in my early thirties, I was constantly in pursuit of something at, you know, at the expense of all other things. And, you know, that, that can, that can, they can render some pretty serious damage in your life, you know, if, uh, you know, you just don't really, you know, sort of like tend to those other areas um, of your life that make you a full person. You know, I, I, I don't think I did that enough. And I think that Marcus sort of suffers from that too. And I think his relationships uh, suffer because of that. And I feel like, you know, part of what, you know, sort of precipitates his whole journey is, this he's he's sort of chased the idea of what he thinks his life should be and then he realizes that he's he what he's got is what he thinks he should want not what he actually wants and 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 so that's 
something that I'm always sort of thinking about, um, you know, as I get older, it's just sort of like, is this, am I in the right path? Is this the thing that I want? Am I actually pursuing that? Or am I like chasing the idea of, of, of happiness? And I think that, you know, a lot of it is Marcus sort of like figuring out what all of that is for himself. And um, so those things I really get. I mean, and also I'm a bit of a square myself. And, and you know, I mean, like I, that's something that I, you know, but I'm done fighting it. I'm 42 years old. Like, you know, just embrace me. it. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is me now. <laughs> Well, there's a big part of this also that I would imagine is pretty vulnerable where, you know, Marcus is, he's opening himself up. He's, you know, sexually active. There's a certain physicality to what you're doing, um, you know, and we've spoken before about maybe you feeling kind of nervous just from doing like a shirtless seat in the good place. Mm -hmm. But then having done that, it was kind of therapeutic in a way. This kind of takes things to a whole new level, I would say. Uh, how did you navigate uh, that part of the role? Uh, you know, it, it, honestly, it's, it's more about just trying to make sure that everyone feels really comfortable. Um, you know, it's like we have an intimacy coordinator, which I, 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 I love that. I love having someone there that just choreographs every single movement so everyone knows exactly what's going to happen, exactly how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Um, and, you know, can also just sort of help you be, you know, just more comfortable in those moments. Um, and, and so it's, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, look, it's still stressful. It's still like, uh, you know, I think everyone that has to do one of these scenes is like, you know, like, ah, damn it, you know. But like, uh, it, 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 if you have someone there to sort of like walk you through it and help you, like make you feel safe, um, you know, that you, you get through them as best as, as I think as, as, as best as possible. Um, but yeah, like it's, I don't know, I'm sort of like at a point now also when it comes to just being like, you know, scantily clad or naked on screen, it's just sort of like a thing that kind of happens now. And I just, I just have to, you know, get over it. And so once again, I'm, embrace it, right? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, this is what happens now. Yeah. Um, well, a big part of the season is obviously the connection he has with Mia, uh, played by Jessica Williams. And I would guess that there might have been some added pressure there to get that relationship right because of, you know, how important she ends up being. Uh, can you talk about just what kind of connection you had with her and, how you sort of develop that chemistry, if there's even a method to that? Yeah, you know, we, we, we honestly just sort of had a spark when we first met, um, like just as, as people. I mean, like, I think that one of the things that, that, that is necessary for the relationship between uh, Mia and Marcus to work is um, Marcus needs to be in awe of, of Mia and a little bit afraid and think that she's way cooler and then he's like, you know, he's really like, she's so out of his league, you know? And, and I, that, I feel that, <laughs> you know, because she's just, she's just so cool and she's just so talented and so um, smart and, 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 and pretty and like just all the things that you're just sort of like, man, like this is, I'm, I'm what, what am I even doing? And I feel like that's, that's a little bit of what Marcus feels. And it's certainly what, you know, like, I think that sort of, that sort of was like the starting point for how I viewed our relationship. And then we just sort of like settled into a, a, a an easy rhythm um, because she's, I think she leads humor first, at least for me, she's like brains and humor first is like the thing that she leads with. And um, and it's, and that's really appealing to me as a person. And I think that that's something in their relationship that just sort of, you know, sort of sparks right off the bat. And, um, and so, yeah, I, it, it just sort of, we, we just sort of clicked into place. And then, you know, as collaborators, we just sort of, we just found a very easy rhythm. It's one of those things you can't really create. You just kind of got to trust that it's going to be there and relax into it. And I feel like that's, um, it's something that we didn't force. We just kind of like found. Mm. 
Yeah, and I'm just thinking of some of your scenes just walking down the street, just the two of you, and there's just this nice free-flowing conversation. I mean, was was that the whole, just like all those dialogue scenes all scripted out? Was there room to sort of improvise from there? We improvised a little, like a little bit, but the scripts were so good, you really didn't need to do mm -hmm. much. You just kind of needed to hold on to it and, um, and just let them, you know, let them flow. Um, we did definitely play around with certain things here and there. And, you know, Jess is so quick witted that, you know, she would just like sort of open up a brand new door and we just like kind of yes and each other and just see what happened. Um, but like, yeah, we, you know, there was limited amount of improvisation, but we usually stuck to the, to the script. Um, and also one of the things that I, I think that uh, Sam really uh, drove home with me it's like something he was interested in is like when is it that you can just let silences do some work when is it that you can just just let things breathe like we don't have to have something happening like all the time it can just sort of be a, a, a little bit slower um, and I think that that sort of feels that lends itself to a kind of intimacy too when you can just let silences happen um, and it's not always charged or something it's just people existing together and that's something that I think that we we found uh, between you know, in, in our, in our scene work that uh, Absolutely. I think sort of, you know, does, does something to the way a relationship feels on camera. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you're on screen with so many different characters, a lot of different love interests over the course of the season. I'm curious if there was, you know, one of those women that we meet along the way outside of Mia, maybe that you felt like maybe it had the potential to be the one that maybe you felt a, another kind of connection to? Oh, well, I mean, you know, I think that, <laughs> well, I think that it's like, it's like, honestly, uh, Ola, Ola, mm -hmm. uh, Ola Adebayo played by Ego Nwodum was like, uh, that was, I feel, I feel like that was a relationship that Marcus really wanted to work, but he wasn't ready. Um, you know, if I'm, it, it, it's, you know, it's like, it, it's just one of those things that happens sometimes where you just like jump in too fast. I think that had this, you know, had he been in the right state of mind, it, it would not have gone down the way it went down. Um, that's not to say that it would have been the forever, forever relationship, but it was definitely, it's something that like, uh, yeah, I feel like he, I, I feel like he just jumped in too fast and wasn't ready. And then things were sort of, she was in a different spot and it's one of those messy things that happens where it's like two good people that are trying but not they're just not in the same place and it, it and people get hurt and there's a lot of collateral damage around that yeah I, I remember watching just that episode and definitely rooting for the both of you but realizing uh what exactly what you said that too fast That's but yeah. Were there were there moments like that maybe over the course of the season where you might have found yourself kind of almost frustrated with Marcus or any of the sort of choices that he was making? Oh hell yeah! I mean, <laughs> I think all all the time. Uh, I, I think maybe some of it was, you know, I had a quick stint of being single in my my sort of early thirties, and I was so so bad at it. I just felt like I was you know, making mistakes and breaking up and getting dumped and just feeling terrible all the time. And it was, um, and I feel like I was just watching Marcus make a lot of those same mistakes, you know? Um, you know, I, I think that it's like, you know, like it, for instance, like the, 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 you know, the most obvious example is him going into that dorm room with Paloma. Like that was such a messy, terrible decision yeah um but you know obviously someone who's just so compromised and so injured and so you know so hurt that it, it, he just finds himself in these crazy situations that he really should not be in and um yeah that was one where i was like marcus go home bro just just go home you know <laughs> like this is yeah. this is terrible like just deal with yourself and i but i think that this is a guy that you know, when your whole life just flips on its, you know, flips on its axis, it's, you know, I think you spend a lot of that, I spend a lot of that early time sort of running from yourself and just trying to fill up, you know, is fill up those gaps with as many things as possible. And 
and it leads to some some pretty questionable decision making. Mm-hmm. Well, um, eventually he does get the happy ending where you know he has Mia, they have a daughter. Um, where do you think that they go from here? Is it truly just a happy ever after situation? I mean, they had these kind of bumps along the way, just getting together again. But what do you think happens from here, if you've thought about that? Oh, well, I mean, I think that it's just like a constant, constantly evolving thing. I think that, um, you know, obviously, Marcus is still dealing with some of the same stuff that that sort of precipitated the, well, well, that partly precipitated some of the troubles in his first marriage, uh, you know, like sort of just not focusing in on, on, on his partner enough. And, um, and so like, I, but I think that they're both in a mature place where they can talk about it, they can deal with it, uh, rather than um, sort of, it, they can acknowledge when something is wrong even if it's not like egregiously wrong, it's, you know, they haven't crossed the Rubicon yet. You know, it's just like, hey, let's deal with this thing before it becomes a huge problem. Just, you know, it's one of those things that comes with maturity where it doesn't have to be a fight. It just has to be a discussion and like, oh, okay, well, let's, let's work on that. And I, I, I see them constantly evolving in that way. Um, I think Marcus still has a lot of growing up to do. And I think that, you know, Mia probably still has a little more growing up to do, but I, I think that they decided to as flawed individuals grow up together and that's that's uh, that's where i think that they're they're headed well we only have a few minutes left here but since we're an awards website i do just want to bring up the fact that you were nominated for not one but two critics choice awards of this past year one of them actually being for love life and the other one for the underground railroad of two very different projects there um and you know they've recognized you in the past as well for the good place but with this acknowledgement getting these two nominations in the same year again for very different roles uh what was just that experience like for you uh it was it was it was crazy i mean honestly um i was i was in the middle of uh of, of working <laughs> you know i was uh you know so i i you know it it, it felt it, I was like in, incredibly honored, um, but also, um, you know, the thing that was most pressing was, uh, you know, the next project. I was just sort of like, I got to try to, you know, like stay present with this one. Um, and so that's, but it's, 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 uh, it's incredible. Um, you know, it's something you just never expect. And, uh, it, you know, it's, 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 it's good to get to work and to have, um, you know, recognition beyond just sort of getting the job and making rent all the time, you know, like anything beyond that is, uh, is, is gravy. So, um, yeah, I, it, 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 it felt, it just felt wild. I just was sort of like, wow, okay, thanks. You know, well, speaking to that future work, you know, you just got done filming with the resort, which you're work, you're co-leading with Kristen Milioti. Very excited about that. Um, anything you want to tease about that, or any or anything else you've got going on in the future? Oh well, I mean, well, look, the resort is uh, it's going to be a wild ride. It's uh, mm-hmm. unlike anything I've ever worked on before, um, and I'm I'm really. I mean, I'm just as curious as anybody else to, to see it. Um, it's just because it's, it's, it's like tonally, um, sort of narratively, everything about it is, is very different from stuff I've, I've done. So I'm, I'm, I'm super, I'm super hyped. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like beyond that, I'm, I'm looking forward to just having a little bit of downtime uh, <laughs> and just uh, before, before things get going again. So I'm, you know, like, yeah, just here in, in the house, um, I'm going to eat some yogurt and some granola and enjoy the rest of the day. It's nice outside. That, that's, that's, that I'll, I'll tease that. That's what I'm looking forward to for. Yes. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for those of you watching, subscribe for more interviews and go to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions. Thank you so much, Will. Always great chatting with you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.